Hey traders, how's it going? Nick from Vant Trading here coming at you with another brief introduction video to another technical analysis indicator. This one's actually pretty unique. It's not one that I was very familiar with, but as I did some research into it, I saw some pretty interesting potential here, both from a swing trading and possibly a day trading perspective. Again, the point of these videos is more educational and informational. I'll give you an idea of what this indicator is, how to use it, and then how you might incorporate it into your trading in some ways. I am by no means telling you you need to use this indicator or how to use it, but I just want you to be aware that there are other methods of measuring price action out there. Today, we're going to be covering Keltner channel. Channels. A little bit of a weird name, one that you may have heard before, not been not too familiar with. It shares some similarities to other ones uh, like Bollinger Bands and a couple other things like that. But I think this one has some interesting properties as well. Reminder, as always, if this video is at all informative or helpful, please be sure to drop a like and subscribe to our YouTube for future, vid for future video updates. And if you have any questions, comments or concerns, Drop them in the comment section below. Now, Keltner channels, what are they? Okay, well, if you've watched our Bollinger Band videos or you know what a Bollinger Band is, this probably looks a little familiar. That's because it's pretty similar. This is by its core design, a volatility-based indicator. And so, you know, this is gonna be acting in a similar-ish way to Bollinger Bands, but it has some key differences. So you've got three lines on here, clearly. Typically, the middle one is an exponential moving average. And typically, it's a 20-period exponential moving average. Obviously, you can go in there and change it however you want. This is typically what I find most traders use. It's just kind of the standard. And either band on either side is not standard deviation based like a Bollinger Band, but it is ATR based. And if you don't know what the average true range is, we have a video on that as well, but it's basically the average high, the low of the stock. So typically what I'm seeing is that above and below that EMA is going to be 1.5 to 2 ATRs away. So basically you're using this as a volatility based indicator both on the expansion and contraction of these ATR bands so the wider it's getting the more volatile that stock is because the ATRs are wider and the tighter that band gets the less volatile the the equity or market you're looking at is getting because the ATRs are getting smaller, obviously. Now, people use this in a variety of ways. Brief, brief history lesson. It was invented by Chester Keltner in the 1960s. Originally, it was a simple moving average, and they just used the high-low price range for the bands because ATR wasn't really invented yet. Uh, but then in the 80s, it became ATR. So this is kind of adapted and changed with the times to an extent. So now you kind of know this is basically just a measure of volatility using ATR and the exponential moving average. You can change it however you want. What are some ways that people might use it? Well, looking at the angle of the channel to, 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 to determine the trend, you know, the direction of where we're going, uh, channeling up, you know, going sideways, maybe going down at some point. So identifying the volatility momentum there, obviously, uh, you know, using maybe moving along the upper band indicates strength. It means we're typically moving higher and faster than our ATRs have been in the past. So that can indicate strength or a combination. Are we tilted up and are we at the upper band or vice versa? Or are we moving sideways and we're bouncing back and forth between the bands? Because yes, there are some traders out there who may try to use them, kind of like Bollinger Bands as more of a support and resistance or a fade play. There's a lot of different ways you can try to use these. I want to show you a couple stock charts now, go through them, and show you some interesting thoughts I had here. So first of all, let's look at some equities. I like it better looking at individual equities. So when you're looking at Apple here, beautiful, beautiful uptrend here. Look at the beautiful uptrend nonstop, just tearing through these. Obviously, you should never have faded against that upper channel as we're channeling higher. But if you're wondering, well, when is this momentum going to stop? The moment it finally kind of flattens out and touches on this lower band, it's clear the momentum has subsided. And then eventually we re-reach the upper band while we're kind of tilting up. We get a little bit more. And then the same kind of thing. We eventually return months later to this lower band. We're flattening out and the momentum has subsided. So in this way, you know, maybe you could try to use it as a, a, a means of identifying when that trend up or down has ended or vice versa. Let's look at another good example in my opinion, Home Depot. Home Depot had a great little run here, trending all along the band, we're sloped up, and then finally we kind of flatten, don't quite reach the lower band, um, we continue higher again, and then bam, we finally kind of flatten out, hit this lower band, we can't get back up to the higher band, and for several months we stagnate. 
uh, you know, you take a little dip here, we actually touch, and if you were buying in here and you saw us start to move downward and hit this lower band, it might have given you a reason to exit or, or something along those lines. But then when we finally reverse an uptrend and touch this, it becomes a reversal. So there's some ways you could try to use it in here. We're still channeling up, although it almost looks like we're flattening out. And if Home Depot were to flatten out and touch this lower band, then the move up is probably at least temporarily stalled for who knows how long. Another one, Tesla. Tesla is a great one because look how tight we get as the ATR tightened. You know, low volatility. We eventually take off, start trending up, moving higher, and then eventually we roll over, touch this lower band, and the momentum has stalled. So, you know, obviously one of the downsides here that I'm seeing is it's a little lagging. And depending on what the time period of this EMA is, this may react faster or slower to changes in price. Same with the ATR you're using, whether that's one, 1 1.5, two, whatever. So depending on what your measurements are, it could change. Let's look at one more and then we'll look at the inner day and then I'll let you go. Baba, Baba's a great example because look, Baba trending up, trending up, still touching. Yeah, a little choppier, but never really touches this bottom. And then until we finally roll over, touch the bottom indicator, and that has kind of started this now actually reversal, not just a stagnation, but a reversal here. Pretty interesting. And we trend lower, trend lower, trend lower, trend lower, and then we flatten out, touch the high, uh, high and actually ended up resulting in a little bit of a brief moment of, of lapse of downside selling. Now it almost looks like we're flattening out and we're pinging back and forth between these. So, I, you know, just based on trying to use the Keltner channels here, I don't normally use them, but this almost tells me that, okay, Okay, we're not quite sure the direction it's going to be going. We need to see where this slope goes. May, these Keltner channels could start narrowing. It could go into a period of just kind of stagnation sideways. We'll see. Yeah, you could try to use this on the market as well. You know, we've been touching this upward channel for a while, uh, touched it down here, you know, and kind of flattened out, but it actually quickly resumed. So, you know, take that what, what you will. But on, you know, on this up move as the market's riding, you know, we eventually touched this downward channel, this downward band, and it actually ended up resulting in a couple months of flat movement largely so you know depending on how you use it and what you want to use it on there might be some application here maybe you could try to use it on the intraday uh, obviously you would have to adapt your bands and your time frame because if it's reading the one minute ATR and things like that you know maybe if you're scalping you could try to use it for a brief reversal like here uh, if you're just riding along the upper band or looking for reversals or something like that I'm not exactly sure how you want to trade that but there's several applications I'm sure some of you geniuses who are smarter than I am could possibly Possibly think of applications for the Keltner channels on an intraday level. Really depends on you. Again, you know, th that's just kind of the standard use, the standard measurements. It's an interesting indicator, one that I'm sure someone would have some use for if you would prefer this over Bollinger Bands or vice versa. Again, None of these are really designed to be the sole determining factor for entries or exits. You should always be using price, uh, price action, price movement, and other indicators as well to give you a better sense of the full picture. That's it. I hope that this was helpful and informative. I thank you for tuning in and as always, safe trading.